Thomas, the sad passing of Franz Beckenbauer yeah. is yeah, something that I think everybody is mourning right now. Yeah. What did he make you feel? Well, he was so humble. The, the, the very few occasions where we met and met very briefly, this was like um, outstanding and very striking to me that he's so, so humble being that extraordinary person, that extraordinary player and, and uh, coach of German national team and, and coach here of, of Bayern Munich and winning all the titles that you can win and, and still be that humble and uh, low-key personality was uh, outstanding always. I have met him now for a long time, which is uh, of course sad and uh, the news came Lately, and it is not, to, of course, um, everybody feels um, sad and everybody feels involved in it. That's, the, I think, the, the greatest gift that he had, that everybody felt close to him, even if you were not close. And for what he achieved, yeah. no one's going to do no that words. again. No, no one's going to do that again. I mean, the way he played, not even that he won every title, and I think he, it was a revolution how he played, the elegance and... and the commitment and then going overseas to New York and like all these things that are now fashionable like he did in uh, <clears throat> centuries ago uh, not centuries but uh, decades ago and uh, and uh, yeah he, he he made way for 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 a lot a lot of generations to come after and is still a role model in, in so many things that he did so uh, without no no words for this career no and without him no buy-in in this modern football no, that we know. No, without him, no, no Bayern Munich in, in, this, in, in this way and in this modern football and in this, uh, in this shape and in this, uh, uh, also in this importance. No, no, no Bayern Munich without Franz Beckerball. Moving to the present, yeah. Harry Kane, yeah. working with him this season, what have you learned about him that as an opponent you wouldn't have known? Uh, it's just a gift, honestly, to be his coach. Uh, I feel very privileged. The guy is uh, the next guy. It's super humble. It's just the first out there on the pitch every single day and uh, just doing what you ever ask of him, he will do it. And uh, he is that huge personality that comes so humble and becomes a, a shark, a shark in, in, on the field because he is up for goals, he's up for winning and he does it on an on a everyday basis. He just does not score only on a daily basis, he, he trains well, he, he does what is needed, he shows his quality, he calms everyone down around him, makes everyone better by his pure presence, so it's, uh, it's highest level. Just can just put it like this, and as a human being, but also as a footballer, highest level. You haven't necessarily worked with many players of his profiles, if I look back at the players at PSG, at, at Dortmund, how has it been for you to adapt to that? Very, yeah, very different profile than to all my other players because he can play as a nine. He's uh, the, the fox in the box, of course, like no other outstanding finishing, but uh, he's also assisting. Um, great, great skills in, in playing the last pass and second to last pass. Great uh, link up play with, with our fast wingers. So it's amazing and uh, yeah, it's, I always say it, you learn from your players. If you have the privilege to be a coach and to be a coach on that level, you learn from your players and you learn a lot from Harry and we find, we find positions where he feels comfortable in, we find the links where, uh, where he likes to link up and, and he can release our speed around him. So this is what we try to do. And uh, yeah, if we have training sessions like, like I just come from, from the pitch, it's, it's always amazing to see him because he does what he does so regularly and that it's, it's, it's astonishing because any finishing chance he has, he hits it on goal, he hits it precisely on goal. The goalkeepers, they know what's coming and still they cannot, they cannot do nothing against. I think astonishing is a good word to also describe 21 goals yeah. in the Bundesliga yeah. so far this season. But it's a, it's a result of the process, it's a result of what he's doing that, that should make him very, very proud and that makes me actually proud because he does not only play for the goal but the goals come to him because he plays how he plays, he plays for the process, he plays to make the, the team work, he plays to make the offensive play work. He's not a selfish guy and this is so nice to see that, that even him as a total team player, 
he gets his goals every every single year to have a start in a new league, in a new environment, new language, new culture. Um, a bit of delay that he brought his family here because uh, they had another child and so on. Like, this is an outstanding achievement. How many play for the process in your experience, even at this level? Uh, more and more, more and more are interested in the process, more and more believe in the process, but, but uh, don't, don't get it wrong. I mean, Harry plays also for the product in the end and he, he wants to be at the end, but it's very special that he, 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 he acts like a team player. He is an outstanding number nine and normally these number nines are, are from a certain, certain type of, of, of character and it's also allowed that sometimes if it's a, maybe a draw 2-2 and he scores twice that yeah at home he is also a bit satisfied and then like in, in, in my youth days when I trained the youth I said like okay we played 2-2-3-3 two, two, three, three, the striker scored three goals he's allowed to go off the field with a smile but he's the only one please <laughs> and, they tick like this, but, but Harry is a, is a special guy. He's a, he's a total team player. He's not, not happy to, to not win. He's a, he's a winner. He takes care that, we, that he does everything that we win, not by only scoring. And the goals come to him as a, yeah, as a result of the process. But he, he, he focuses, of course, on this and this is good. That Robert Lewandowski record yeah. of 41 goals is in think danger. I would <laughs> it is in danger, and no one could ever believe that it it will be in danger forever. But it is in danger. But we need a bit of luck. We need uh, we need the, the team get the team going. Harry needs to be fit, and then we see what's coming. There must be a party that thinks it's going to happen, <laughs> right? I am not so much aware of how many goals he has. You always tell me how much points we have, so I'm very very focused on the process, but. Um, I clearly think that for Harry there are, no, there are no limits. There was a phrase you used about the players around him that I liked, release the speed. Yeah. And when you say release the speed, there's one man that comes to mind more than most, and that is Leroy Sané. Yeah. You have managed to release not just the speed, but the precision with him this season, and the mm. consistency that we've not seen from him yeah. so far in his career. Yeah. What's clicked? I don't know. I think we clicked. This is just by chance because we like each other and I think it helps Leroy to feel calm. He knows very well what I demand from him and I demand a lot. I saw, the, I saw then live on the pitch the physical power that the boy has is simply incredible. So I said very early with this physicality you have to dominate the league. There's no other way that you, you can be happy without dominating and, and be outstanding player for us. Uh, then we saw that his best numbers came from the left side, also at Manchester City. So we swapped sides uh, in, within the season with um, Kingsley Coman. I think that helped a lot, even if he did not like it so much maybe in the beginning. But with Harry dropping the play up, the link up play with Harry is, is very good. And then we have Shamal and we have, of course, also Kingsley Coman, who, who, which uh, have the same attributes and have the same uh, skills and speed and accelerating our game. And it's a good fit and a good link up play with all of them and, and Harry. When you say we like each other, I take it you mean on a personal level? On a well. personal level, I think we have like just like he, he listens to me, he believes me, he. he we have affection for each other, that helps, but then the, 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 the big thing uh, Leroy has to do, it's always like this, we can help and we can, we can uh, try to motivate him, we can try to, to find a connection to him, this is what happened, but the, he has to step up and he has to keep on going now, he cannot be happy. He has, I think, um, some outstanding numbers already, he had, like, had, he, the, the numbers could be higher if he was like, more precise. And, and uh, this is the thing for, for Leroy, to keep the thing going. And that's why it's good that Harry is by his side, because then he sees how it's done, because Harry is doing it on an everyday basis, no matter what training session we do, he's doing it. And this is the next step for Leroy, to, to be consistent. The, the, the potential and the, the, the decisiveness is, is outstanding so far, but it's only half a season and you have to you have to keep going and, and produce these numbers in the, in the decisive moments of the season now. I get that as a coach there's a certain professional boundary that you have to keep with, with your players, yeah. but what is Leroy like? Because we see him from the outside and uh, I guess the blanks are filled in with 
body language. That's how it tends to happen in the media yeah, and, it amongst happens. us. It happens with him, yeah. I, I find him very, very nice and very calm and uh, very direct and honest uh, person. He likes to be addressed very directly. We had uh, several talks, several meetings in one-on-one. -on -one. I think he likes this also, that you show the respect to tell him the criticism directly and, and in a, behind closed doors. Then he, can, uh, then he can digest it very well and, 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 and show up. But then on the other hand, I think he needs, even if he seems very self-confident and he feels self-confident on the pitch, but he needs to feel the, the, the support and the genuine support of the coach. I think he's one of these very sensitive type of players who needs that. That's why I said it in the beginning, it's also luck that we have this kind of connection, that he trusts me and I trust him. And from that we, we try to push him because uh, yeah, there are both sides in him. He has this kind of body language where he can, where he can catch a negative, a negative spin that does not help the team and does not help him. But on the other hand, if he stays calm, if he stays focused, if he shows uh, uh, trust in his environment and, and where he is, he can be the decisive, uh, one of the decisive guys in the league. And, and that's what he shows and this is what we work on. Another player who has made an impact this season, I think in a very positive way, is Matthijs Tell. Yeah. But, but just every time you've brought him off the bench, mm. he seems to have done something, particularly yeah. in, those, in those first moments. Yeah. What are the next steps in his development? Yeah, he could not keep it up. I could also understand sometimes it, was, it felt, I think, very unfair to him to not get a chance to start. So we kept him from the bench because it was such a huge impact from the bench for us. He decided so many matches for us. He was so decisive for us. So we kept him there. There were some moments where he deserved to start, where decisions got against him. And then later in the season, I felt that he takes it a bit harder than in the beginning, which is very normal because you have a certain status. You come, you come, you, you do your job, you do your job, you do your job, you want the reward and, and, and still like, the four guys who mainly started for us were also very good and deserved to, 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 to stay on the pitch. So it, he struggled a little bit and it did not come so easy uh, to him in the, in the, in the end of the, the first half of the season. So I hope he finds this mojo again, he finds the right attitude to not... I like when they are impatient, but not be too impatient that it affects your mood and then it affects your... your your lightness on the on the pitch and your creativity. So hopefully we find he can find his 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 spin again, and then we can find the moments to to bring him on because he has this raw type of energy as a striker that you find very very rarely. He is like a like a like a dog, like a young dog goes everywhere. He has this raw physicality, that that huge power in his body that is really, really good and the finishing is outstanding for his age. So, yeah, it's our job to keep him going. Are there any other qualities you pick out about him just from stylistically? I think he's finding his style, he's finding his position with us. It's, it's not 100% there yet. What stands out for me is physicality, his speed, his body and, and the, the, the self-confidence in finishing is outstanding for that age. To an older player, Manuel Neuer, yeah. I think of the amount of times that even though he's had the career he's had, he seems to have been written off every time he gets injured that will he come yeah. back in the same Very form. Very strange, no? maybe a bit German, <laughs> a, bit, uh, a bit German to do this all the time. So, so was there a little bit of you even that was surprised just by yeah. coming in a different, with a different coach to the one who was last playing in? things for him to adapt to but you just wouldn't know it no you would not know it and it's i i am surprised uh, still even if i saw him train and uh, once he told me his story uh, how he got injured and how bad the injury was i was uh, kind of in shock and i was like uh, in um, in doubt and i was uh, I was doubting if he can come back on, on this level. I was hoping. I'm so, so happy for him that, uh, um, that he made this way and, and uh, he was right that he will do it because he was always uh, very, very focused. Um, I am happy that we, we, we trusted him. I am happy that we believed him because from the first, from the first moments when he, when he felt free, when he felt without pain, 
he showed straight away in training another level of goalkeeping and uh, now after some times of um, of break in the in the winter break it helped him a lot so now he's, he's happy to be on the pitch and he is so so good and it's it's a kind of an attitude it's a kind of aura around him that you cannot learn it says this is not written in a book it's just you have to you have to experience it and uh, to come back after that uh, uh, that long time and to come back in that way tells the story it's a fantastic achievement final player I'll come to for now Thomas Muller I think Managing that situation for you must be one of the most difficult parts of your job because... Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> legend, legend of the club, yeah. but is used to playing a lot more from the start than he is. Yeah. How is that for you? Yeah, it's painful also for me. It's hard for me because I understand and, uh, how, how big it is also for the club and for the fans that, that uh, players like Thomas play and that they are in the club and they make this club a special club and I'm the first one to, 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 to agree, I'm the first one to agree that these kind of guys make it special and that you always have, you're always looking for that mix to have guys from around Munich, guys from Germany, guys from, from the Youth Academy mixed with superstars like, like, uh, like Harry Kane and that makes, uh, that, that makes then a mixture that, that the team is also loved and the team is something special. And Thomas is one of the outstanding guys, of course, in the history of Bayern Munich. He won everything. This is very hard also to tell him maybe week by week that it's not him who starts. It's very easy because I can only speak um, very, very highly about him. He trains like a young player. The attitude he trains with is the attitude of a young player. He has not the body of a young player, of course. He is not the speed anymore of a young player, but he has the attitude and the mindset of a young player. And that is uh, so beautiful to see. He is there in every training, even if he maybe does not start and trains the next day, trains with young guys. He will never accept to, 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 he will do everything to win a four against four, to win a five against five on the next day. He will be there. He will not say, oh, I feel something, I, I better stay off, which would be also okay for me. Um, and that is, that is the easy part of the job, that he is like this. I know that uh, he wishes for more minutes. I, I wish sometimes uh, to have one or two places more to give, to give the guys the minutes that they deserve. But I'm, I'm very happy and I will never, never uh, doubt um, the legend that he is. The progress of the team yeah. so far under you. Such is the nature of this club and how successful it's been. Even the smallest Rick in the road feels yeah. like whoosh. Yes. It's probably the best yeah, way to describe it. Yeah, it's perfectly described. Yeah. Um, so how do you see the progress of the team under you so far? Well, I think that uh, maybe to start it in the other way around, I think that Leverkusen is the only team now in, in Europe who is not beaten yet. So they won all their Euroleague games, they won, they won the cup games, they, won, they did not lose any match in the, in, in the league and still we are just one point behind. And we had a lot of problems, we had a lot of problems with injuries, we had many, most of the matches, only four or five players on the bench, it became normal. We, uh, we brought in guys from the Youth Academy that were not on anyone's list before the season. They played very regularly, they, they came from the bench, they were starters. We, um, we played uh, Leon Goretzka with a broken hand. We played him from, in one match in Dortmund from left hand to right central defender. We played Nus Masrau in, 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 uh, in their central defense. We played Conny Leimer as a, as a, as a fullback. It happened so often, I think, that it became normal to all of us. Once you look at it from, from the perspective, like, like you say, like what did we do this half a year, you realize, wow, this was, uh, this was the lineup, or this was the starting lineup, or we had no one on the bench, or it was only four players on the bench. It became normal and we kept the, the results going. In between we had some top matches, in between we had some phases where things did not come so easy for us, which is not a problem. But there is room for improvement in this club, of course, if you go out of the cup, no one is happy. I'm the first person to be, to be worried and to be, to be angry and to be disappointed. And this is the environment that we live in and it brings out the best in us. 
I hope that we can uh, that we are a bit more lucky with uh, with um, injuries in the second part of the season. We were very good in transition. We were very good in general in defending as a block. We can improve in the rhythm of our game. We can improve in counter pressing. There is still room in, if, for improvement, which is a good thing. But we managed also a group stage in Champions League in a in a very tight group, and we we were well ahead and uh, won five out of six games. So there are things that we can be happy with. And still at Bayern Munich, you're you're never you're never satisfied and and uh, you're never finished. Well, that's the thing for me. But you've worked in England. Yeah. In England, if you win, all good. You can go home. <laughs> As you know by your pro predecessors here, yeah. if you win, it might not be enough. Yeah. How it's do you, maybe a German you thing, I have to say. And being out of the country for five, six years, it strikes me very German, this mentality. And I'm sometimes surprised, yeah. The, 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 the positive vibe that you get in England after winning a match is, is, is even if you're maybe the favourites, it's much more and it lifts you higher than you get it here. It's, it's true. It is a maybe kind of a German characteristic to look for the, for the, for the one thing, for the two things. And, and you have to make sure that you not get caught up in it because then you constantly look at the glass half empty and it helps no one. So, um, yeah, it's, but it's the environment, it's the culture that, that your club is in and you, it brings also out uh, the best in, 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 in me personally, but also of the, of the players and, and you adapt to it. Every culture is different and, and in Paris it was different than in London and here it's very different. But yeah, it's a, it's a bit difficult because we win here now the league, 11, not me personally, but the club wins it 11 times in a row, so things can become normal. If you constantly go with five players, uh, four players on the bench instead of seven, if you constantly do it, it becomes normal. And, and uh, if you constantly be champions, you can reach a point where it becomes normal. And uh, normality in, the, in, the, in, in being first is not a good approach to get better. So uh, it's sometimes difficult, difficult to, to constantly revive this fire in, 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 in yourself because uh, if you do it, you say, yeah, you buy Munich, it's normal that you do it. But if you don't do it, it's the, it's the biggest surprise in the world. So there's, uh, this is a, a bit unfair in the, in the perception, but that's the way it is. It is also this club, though. It's not just, they, they, as you know, they don't think quite the same in Mainz, for yeah, example. Exactly, the, of course. Is there a part of you that's always just that extra bit, not nervous, but I guess just having to be wary of how sensitive every situation can be here. The focus is on Bayern Munich in this country. It is the biggest club and it is the club in, in Europe that competes for German, that, that represents the German league more than, uh, and foremost than, than more than any, any, uh, any club else. It is like this and that's why the spotlight is on. Look at our training ground. Everyone can, 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 can have a look what we train. Everyone can see what we are doing. So there is stuff to, to write about us. And, and, and that makes little things seem like big things here. And that makes it yeah sometimes, uh, like you say, it's uh, sometimes things seem bigger, like, of course, a draw, a defeat than uh, in particular, but even like little things can, can, can be in the press for two, three days, where it's absolutely nothing around it. But that's the environment and it's, uh, it, it is the club in, in Germany and that's why it's, I think, a particular situation and that's why it's difficult, totally different to, to um, a, diff, uh, uh, a surrounding in Mainz. So the final day of last season, you talk about the feeling of becoming champions before. <laughs> How was that? going through your mind? Well, first of all, I thought we lost it in the last home match against Leipzig. I thought we lost the title. I was sure that Dortmund will do their homework and win this match in Mainz. Then very, very quickly, Bayern Munich, uh, Bayern Munich, uh, Thomas Müller uh, stepped up in the dressing room and said, this is not finished. It did not convince me fully at this moment. It was, <laughs> I think, a Saturday afternoon, but still I was impressed and it made me think, at least. So, and I think that was uh, his aim, and he reached his aim. He stand up, He stood up in the dressing room, and said, "This is not finished. It's finished when it's finished, and today is not finished. Today was, but there is one more match to play." And uh, 
okay, uh, after this big disappointment, we, we, we stood up again, we showed a reaction during the week, stepped up, we, we found a, a, a way to approach this game, and then we, we scored the, the first goal, and then we hear, of course, from our fans from the bench that things are going into our way. But it was a crazy match, don't forget, we caused a hand penalty then uh, and, and suddenly we gave it out of our hands and I was sitting on the bench and thought like, is this the summary of this whole season? Like this constant up and down like in a roller coaster? Is this match now from being champions to, to giving it away from ourselves while Mainz is helping us? This, this cannot be. And luckily we found this one spark uh, with, with uh, Shamal Musiala. Uh, to get it over the line and in the last minutes were just uh, pure anxiety that, that Dortmund will not uh, score and, and take it out of our hands. And yeah, this was a, a strange feeling, it was a big relief, it was of course pure joy because it was not done, it was like for the spectator it must have been absolutely perfect. So using that experience going into this season, yeah. a similarly tight but a different nature of a title race yeah. with Leverkusen, the game that I think everybody is really going, rubbing their hands with glee about, is that away game you've got there? How, how, is, how is that playing on your mind? Well, we want to arrive there in a good position to, to overtake them or maybe um, to, to at least overtake them in that match. And that's why we have to do our homework now. And the, the, like we said before, the situation is very clear. We have everything to lose, they have everything to win. It's like this the whole season, so everyone maybe outside as a neutral uh, spectator waits at least for one team to get the title finally after last season it didn't happen. Now it's a title race where they are extraordinary and don't forget how good Stuttgart is and Leipzig can also catch a run at any moment. So yeah, the title race is on, we are in the middle of it and we always play against the perception that uh, you should be up front, you should have done this, you should have not lost this game and, and you should be uh, better here and better there and it should be easy for you but it's never easy. So um, it, it helps up to, it helps us of course to sharpen our minds. Of, I hope that it does not block us because um, it is no shame in, in like being one point behind Leverkusen at the moment and, and, and be the hunters, this is no problem. And at one point and then the second leg of the season we want to overtake them and, and keep the position. But it will be a, a difficult task. I don't think that they will have... They are, I think that they are a strong team, they are a solid team, they are a unit with an excellent coach, so it will be a race until the end. Bayern, you are always also judged by the Champions League. Yeah, of course. It is the golden goose. Yeah. How, how do you see that this season? You satisfied with the performances in the group stage heading into? Very satisfied with the results. It was uh, difficult matches. Uh, we had very, very good results. Performances were sometimes, uh, yeah, we can still step up and still can do better. We are very aware. We made it to the top of the group, that gives us a slight advantage uh, to play against um, a team with Lazio who are second in the group and we have the slight advantage to be uh, a second leg at home. So the, the, the bottom line is we want to make it to quarterfinals, this is the, the minimum goal, this is clear at Bayern Munich. And from there, let's be honest, then you need a draw, then you need a bit of luck, you need your, your your, your players ready, you need them to, to be in shape, you need them uh, not injured and, and you need a bit of luck in the decision making and in, in the game itself. And like for me, everyone who is in quarterfinal can, can, can win this tournament. But like you said with the match in, in Leverkusen, we have to make it to quarterfinal. This is the big target and from there we take it uh, and until there and from there we take it step by step. But of course the dream, the dream is alive. Given what you were saying about German mentality to me, I'm very interested what you think of how little excitement I'm feeling from those around me about the Euros being here in the summer. Yeah. Are you feeling that as well? Yeah, I felt it as well and I felt it like, um, I felt the opposite in the, in, I, felt, I felt the difference between the excitement in, in England about the World Cup in Qatar and uh, the strange mood around the team and around this World Cup in, in Germany and I hope that uh, 
that the, 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 the mood will lift up. I feel it very different to the World Cup that we hosted. Everyone was super excited before and I felt it very, very early in the country and uh, the atmosphere was a, was a different one. The, the, the results and, and the atmosphere around, around the, the results in the latest tournaments were not great. So um, it's maybe also a bit understandable that the, the excitement is not full on, but I think especially this team now, especially after a dry spell of results, we need, we need this, this extra spark in, in the country to take full advantage. But I agree with you, there is still some, some time to go and um, I hope we, we will have a turnaround in, in, in the general atmosphere. Do you feel more appreciated in England than you are here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty simple question. I feel that um, in th that we are very critical with each other in 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 in, in Germany and especially with with, uh, with with players or with coaches, not only with me. And it's very hard to escape a certain. Um, Draw once you're in the draw. This is how we, how we call it in Germany. So so, yeah. so there is a picture, and this picture is uh, basically the picture for years and years. I felt uh, more appreciation in 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 England, yes. Which is no no. It's just sure. a fact. Sure. I'm not complaining. When it comes to getting out of the football bubble, you seem to place an emphasis on that in a different way to, I'd say, other football people when we hear about it. You're known for... What do you hear about me? Well, let's see, <laughs> right? <laughs> now, first time you've seen me, you really look nervous. <laughs> but about the yoga, the meditation, reading, swimming in lakes, this is, a different, this is a different kind of image to football men that we see. Why do you place that emphasis, I guess, is my question. It's just me. I, I talk very rarely about it, but it's just, it's just me and what makes me happy. I just find my happy places. I'm happy when I play... When I do sports with friends, I'm happy when I spend time with my, my family, I'm happy when I spend time with my children and do stuff like swimming in a lake and, and, um, and do a bit like stuff that you would also do like in, as, a, as a child or as a, as, a, as a young man. So it keeps me young and is, is nice. I'm, I'm sometimes, I am into, I, I, I am into meditation, in, in, I'm very, very bad at yoga very very stiff and it makes me it makes me angry all the time i do it so i try a bit of other stuff but yeah once i keep my routine going i feel better i'm not the most disciplined person in doing it i don't know why it's just also a bit of an on and off and uh, yeah i love to read books because it distracts me um, it's as easy as that to 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 read a good book to read in my kindle in the in the evening just um, is, is a very good hour or can be two hours and I can get lost in, in books and otherwise I watch football matches on, on TV. This is <laughs> this is pretty much it. I, I, I heard succession was a thing for you as well. Succession was a thing. Now I, I watched I, I was in love with uh, slow horses. Okay. Very, very good for, for me, like the humor, the, the interacting, the acting, the, the actors and, and uh, it was, was very nice to watch, yeah. It was a good distraction. Who's your favourite succession character? That's all I, I, I need will to not know. answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely not answer that. The they are all a handful. They are all a handful and they have all a very, very dark side. I will not, I will not. I don't want any association <laughs> with that. So this is a big trap. I will not, uh, you will not make me tap in. Thomas, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Same Cheers. Me. Thanks.